Welcome to another Aurora Generators podcast and this deep dive. Great to be here. Today we're digging into something pretty specific, but oh, so frustrating if it happens to you. Mm. Picture this. Power's out, maybe bad weather, maybe you're camping, miles from anywhere. You get your portable generator out. Yep, done all the checks. Exactly. Fuel's good, oil's topped up, you set the choke, give it a pull, and yes, the engine starts up. Relief, right. Hear that hum. Total relief. It's running smooth, purring away. So you grab like a work light or try to charge your phone. Yeah. You plug it in and absolutely nothing. Zero power coming out. The engine's running, but the outlets are dead. Oh, that is the worst feeling. Yeah. Because everything sounds okay. Yeah. The engine noise tells you it should be working. Right. And you probably check the obvious stuff again, you know, gas, oil. Yeah. Maybe a circuit breaker tripped on the panel. Check those breakers, yeah. They look fine. Still nothing. It's, uh, it's a We're... common head scratcher. Seems like it should work, but... No. Exactly. And looking through all the, uh, the research, the articles, the user reports for this deep dive, it turns out that while a few things could cause this generator running, no power, one reason pops up again and again. Okay. It's often down to losing something called residual magnetism. Residual magnetism. Sounds a bit technical, but it's actually fundamental to how these things work. Yeah. So our mission today is to unpack that. What is this stuff? Why is it so important? How does it just vanish? And crucially, what can you do about it? Can you get it back? And how to stop it happening again, hopefully. Right. So let's peel back that first layer. How do generators actually make electricity in the first place? Okay. So the basic principle, it's uh, electromagnetism. Yeah. You move wires, conductors through a magnetic field. That movement makes electrons flow, creates voltage, creates current. Standard generator stuff. Standard stuff. Now, most portable generators, they don't have big, strong, permanent magnets doing this job for the main power output. Okay, so where does the magnetic field come from? They make their own. They use an electromagnet, basically coils of wire. When electricity flows through those coils, boom, you get a magnetic field. Ah, but wait. If it needs electricity flowing through the coils to make the field, but it needs the field to make the electricity, how does it start? Exactly. That's the chicken and egg problem you mentioned. And that's where our little hero comes in. Residual magnetism. The residual bit, the leftover bit. Precisely. Even when the generator's off, a tiny, tiny amount of magnetism kind of lingers in the middle parts, especially the iron core of the windings. It's like a faint magnetic memory. Like static cling, but magnetic. Sort of. One source called it stored energy. It's really weak on its own, not enough to do much, but it's the essential first spark. Okay, so how does that tiny spark get things going? This is where it gets really interesting, right? It is. So when you start the engine and everything starts spinning, that tiny residual field is just enough to generate a very small initial voltage in the windings. How small are we talking? We saw one note where someone actually measured it like only one and a half volts, hmm. 1.5V. Okay, clearly not enough to power anything. Not at all. But here's the key. That tiny voltage is detected by the generator's brain specifically a component called the AVR, the Automatic Voltage Regulator. The AVR, okay, I've heard of that. It keeps the power steady, right? Exactly. Its main job is to keep the output voltage stable, like at 120 volts. Mm -hmm. But its first job is to grab that tiny 1.5 volt signal that the residual magnetism managed to create. Mm -hmm. It takes that signal, amplifies it a bit, cleans it up, and crucially feeds it back as a small electric current into those electromagnet coils, the exciter windings. Ah, okay, so the residual magnetism makes a tiny voltage, the, the AVR sees it, and uses it to send a little bit of power back to make the electromagnet slightly stronger. You got it, that's the bootstrap. Yeah. That slightly stronger field now generates a bit more voltage. The AVR sees that, sends back a bit more current, making the field even stronger. Which makes more voltage, which lets the AVR send more current, it ramps up. It ramps up really fast. It's a feedback loop that builds the magnetic field very quickly until the generator reaches its full output voltage, 120 or 240 volts, whatever it's designed for. Wow. Okay, so that initial residual magnetism isn't just a little bit important. It's absolutely critical without it. Without it, you don't even get that first 1.5 volts. If there's no tiny voltage signal, the AVR has nothing to work with. It never starts sending current to the exciter coils. So the electromagnet never gets energized. Right. The main magnetic field never gets built. The engine can spin all day long, but electrically, nothing's happening. No power output. It really is like trying to start a fire with no spark. The fuel's there, the air's there, but no ignition. Good analogy. That residual magnetism is the ignition spark. 
Okay, so that explains why it's a problem if it's gone. But why does it go away? Why does this magnetic memory fade? Well, the sources we looked at point to a few common reasons for this vanishing act. Things we might be doing or not doing. Mostly, yeah. One big one is just letting the generator sit unused for too long. How long is too long? It varies, but one source suggested maybe three to six months, maybe longer. That faint magnetic field just naturally fades over time if it's not reinforced by running the generator. Okay, so disuse is a factor. What else? How you shut it down seems really important. Several sources emphasize this. Shutting off the engine while things are still plugged in and drawing power, having the load connected. Ah, so pulling the plug before hitting the off switch is key. Seems to be. The idea is that when the field collapses suddenly while under load, it can sometimes leave the core demagnetized, erasing that residual bit. Interesting. Any other shutdown or running issues? Kind of the opposite, actually. Running the generator for a long time with nothing plugged in, no load at all. Really? Why is that bad? It seems that running under load helps properly establish and maintain that magnetic field. If there's no load, the system might not get fully exercised, let's say. And the residual magnetism might not get properly set or reinforced for the next startup. Huh. Okay, so don't let it sit forever. Always disconnect load before shutdown. And don't run it for ages with no load makes sense. There's one more kind of surprising one, especially for brand new generators. Yeah. Just the vibration from shipping. If it's traveled a long way, bounced around in a truck, that physical jarring can sometimes be enough to knock out that delicate residual magnetism before you even use it the first time. Wow. Okay. So let's say it's happened. The generator is running no power. You suspect lost magnetism. How do you fix it? How do you get that spark back? The good news is there's often a fix. The term used is field flashing or sometimes re-energizing. Mm -hmm. The basic idea is you give the generator a little external electrical kick to recreate that initial magnetic field. You're basically jump-starting the magnetic field. Exactly. You provide a temporary voltage from outside to get that bootstrap process going again. Okay, how do you do that? Well, there are a couple of main methods described. One is, uh, let's call it the more direct electrical method. It involves using a 12-volt DC battery. Like a car battery. Or... A lawnmower battery. Yeah, either of those or even a smaller sealed 12V battery could work. You need some wires to connect this battery briefly to specific points inside the generator's electrical system. Inside. Okay, that sounds a bit more involved. It is. You usually have to take a cover off to get to the wiring, often near the voltage regulator. You're looking for the leads that feed the exciter field, sometimes marked F plus and F. And you connect the battery there. Positive to F plus, negative plus to F. Right. Polarity is important. You connect it just for a second or two while the generator engine is running. That 12 volts provides the initial juice to magnetize the field. Okay, but messing around inside with wires while it's running, that sounds like something you need to be careful with. Extremely careful. The sources are very clear on the safety warnings here. You're dealing with electricity, potential for shocks, even from 12 volts if something goes wrong, and especially once the generator does start producing its full voltage, which could happen suddenly. So knowing what you're doing, understanding polarity, being cautious, it's critical. And honestly, if you're not comfortable or experienced with electrical work, the advice is definitely to get a professional. Good advice. Don't want to make things worse or get hurt. Definitely not. And one source mentioned, after you get the voltage up using the battery method, let the generator run for maybe 15 minutes or so just to help really set that magnetism again. Okay, so that's the battery method. A bit technical, maybe a bit intimidating for some. Is there an easier way? There often is. Hmm. And this one's quite clever, highlighted as pretty common, and uses a tool many people have. What's that? A corded electric drill. A drill? How does a drill help? It's based on the principle that an electric motor is basically a generator run in reverse. If you spin the shaft of a motor, it actually generates a small voltage. Oh, right. I think I've heard that. So here's the technique they describe. First, get the generator engine running. Importantly, make sure the circuit breakers on the generator panel are O off F. Okay, engine running, breakers off. Then, you plug your corded drill into one of the generator's outlets. Plug it in. Now, you squeeze and hold the drill's trigger down. But nothing will happen yet because there's no power from the generator. Exactly. The circuit is made, but no power flow. Now, for the magic part, you grab the chuck of the drill, the part that holds the bit, and you manually spin it. Spin the chuck. Which way? Vigorously and backwards. Opposite to the way it would normally turn. Spin it backwards. Okay. As you spin it backwards, the drill motor acts like a tiny generator. It produces a small AC voltage. 
And because it's plugged into the generator... That voltage goes back through the cord into the generator's outlet and wiring. Bingo. You're sending a small voltage pulse back into the generator system, effectively flashing the field windings from the outlet side. That is neat. So you're using the drill to create that initial spark the generator needs. Precisely. And the best part is, you know immediately if it worked. Oh. Because the moment the generator's field gets excited and it starts producing its own power, the drill in your hand will suddenly start running. Ah, uh -huh. because now it's getting power from the generator, it just helped kickstart. That's the sign. Drill starts spinning on its own. You've likely restored the residual magnetism. Much simpler, generally safer, because you're not opening things up. That's a really cool practical tip. Using the drill backwards? Okay, but yeah. what if neither method works? You try flashing with a battery, or you spin the drill chuck like mad, and still nothing. That's definitely possible. And if flashing doesn't bring the power back, it strongly suggests the problem isn't just lost residual magnetism. It means something else is wrong electrically. Right. It points towards a failure in one of the other components involved in generating or regulating the electricity. And troubleshooting those usually requires more than just a simple trick. So what kind of other components could be the issue based on what we saw? Well, the sources list several possibilities that a technician would start looking into. It could be... Uh, faulty diodes in the rectifier assembly, that's part of converting AC to DC for the field. Or the AVR itself, that automatic voltage regulator we talked about. If that unit fails, it can't do its job, even if it gets a signal. Makes sense, if the brain is broken. Yeah. Or you could have wiring problems, brakes, shorts, bad connections within that whole excitation circuit. Maybe even physical damage to the windings themselves, like they're broken or shorted to ground. Are there parts that just wear out over time? Sure. On generators that use brushes, not all do, but many portable ones do, those brushes transfer current to rotating parts. If they get worn down, stuck, or dirty, they can interrupt the circuit. Brushes. Okay. Anything else? One source also mentioned capacitors. In some systems, particularly those with the small separate permanent magnet generator, or PMG, to help with excitation, a failed capacitor in that part of the system could be the culprit. Wow. Lots of potential failure points. And sometimes, don't overlook the simple things. It could even be a faulty circuit breaker on the generator panel itself. Like the breaker looks okay, not tripped, but internally it's failed. Exactly. The generator might be making power just fine, but a bad breaker stops it from reaching the outlets. Yeah. To diagnose these kinds of issues, you really need tools like a multimeter to test circuits and components. Which brings us back to safety and maybe needing professional help if the simple flashing doesn't work. Absolutely. Unless you're really skilled and comfortable with electrical diagnostics, testing live circuits, it's safer and often faster to call in an expert for those deeper issues. Right. Okay, so prevention is better than cure, as they say. What were the key takeaways from the sources on how to avoid losing that residual magnetism in the first place? They boil down to a few pretty straightforward habits. First, don't let the generator sit idle for, like, months and months on end. Run it periodically. Yeah, start it up every now and then, maybe once a month or every couple of months. Let it run for a bit. And importantly, run it with a small load connected when you do this exercise. Ah, the load is important again, which connects to the next point, right? Definitely. Always run the generator with some kind of electrical load whenever it's operating for any length of time. Don't just let it sit there humming away with nothing plugged in. That load helps keep the magnetic field healthy. Seems to be the case. It ensures the system is actually doing the work it's designed for, which helps maintain that magnetism. And the final big one, related to shutdown. The crucial one. Always turn off or unplug everything connected to the generator before you turn the engine off. Disconnect the load first, then shut down the engine. Simple steps, really. Run it periodically with load. Always use a load when running. Disconnect load before stopping. If you follow those, you significantly reduce the chances of facing that frustrating engine runs no power scenario due to lost magnetism. Okay, so let's try and wrap this up. That frustrating moment generating your engine humming but no juice coming out is often caused by the loss of this tiny invisible force. Residual magnetism. Yep. The essential spark needed to kickstart the whole power generation process. It can fade away from disuse or get knocked out by improper shutdown, like leaving things plugged in, or even running with no load. But the good news is, often you can bring it back with field flashing. Maybe the slightly more technical 12V battery method, being very careful. Or, often easier, the clever trick of plugging in a corded drill, 
holding the trigger and spinning the jug backwards to send a little voltage back into the generator. A neat physics hack. Yeah. But if flashing doesn't work, it points to other possible electrical issues, AVR, diodes, wiring, brushes, maybe even a breaker. And that's likely time to call in someone with the right tools and expertise. Mm-hmm. And prevention is key. Run your generator regularly with a load and always, always disconnect that load before shutting it down. It really makes you think, doesn't it? How something as simple, almost counterintuitive as spinning a drill check backwards can tap into fundamental physics to jolt a machine back to life. Or just how vital these invisible magnetic fields are. We rely on them constantly from the huge power plants down to this portable generator you need in a pinch. They're the unseen engine driving so much of our technology. It definitely gives you a new appreciation for the hidden mechanics keeping things running. A lot more going on under the hood than just the noisy engine part.